Greetings everyone, once again it's Brother Mota Mwanidi sharing the authentic truth brought to us by Zula 100, the only teacher. The message today is popular justice and self-defense regarding the law of retaliation, also the law of the Italian. <clears throat> In some countries, many may observe, see, that when, for example, a criminal, a thief, uh, a murderer is found, is apprehended by the public, Many people will, um, in those in different type of countries, sometimes they will seize that person, that criminal. They will burn that criminal. They will beat that criminal. They will inflict him great pain. And some people, while observing that, some who call themselves Christians or other forms or in other form of beliefs, will say, "No, that is barbarism." Then we will see if, according to the scriptures, according to the spiritual, if self-defense, if uh, the law of retaliation is approved. And because also some Christians will say, no, if somebody hit you, somebody slap you on the, on the, sh on the cheek, you also have to show him the other cheek as uh, the current Bibles claim. And others will claim, no, you cannot defend yourself. Uh, you don't have the right to defend yourself. <clears throat> In some countries, uh, if you defend yourself, you have the right to, to, to protect yourself. But you can, if you cause, uh, if you kill uh, the criminal, for example, if there's an intruder comes to your home, to your house, to try to steal, to try to cause you harm, and if in the process of defending yourself, you kill that criminal, you may be arrested, you may go to jail, and so on. Uh, in other places, in different other countries, um, you have the right to defend yourself. And even if you kill that person, the criminal, uh, you're not, uh, you won't be arrested. <clears throat> so, we will see then, like I've mentioned, in the scriptures. And this message, it is going to be in the current Bibles. When we go in Matthew chapter 5, verse 39, you're told, But I tell you, comma, do not resist an evil person, period. That is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 39, in the current Bibles. But I tell you, comma, do not resist an evil person, period. If anyone slap you on the right cheek, comma, turn, them, turn to them the other cheek also, period. Is that true? Because according to the current Bibles, that, that is that supposed Jesus that said that, that gave that recommendation. So if somebody, does that mean if somebody comes to you and maybe you are with your girlfriend, you the man out there, or maybe you are with your children and they inflict harm, they want to slap your girlfriend or they want to slap your wife or they want to slap, slap let's say your daughter, are you going to let that happen? Are you going to say, no, Christ says, uh, turn the other cheek? Is that true? Is that what you're supposed to do? When we go in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15, you're told, None of you, comma, however, should suffer as a murderer, comma, a thief, comma, an evildoer, comma, or a meddler. In this passage, you have to understand that the many people suffer, many criminals, the evildoers. So here you're told a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or, mur or a meddler. Because those type of people, uh, Peter here understood that in the visible, those who cause those type of, who cause harm, who do evil, who murder, who steal, they will face consequences. They will suffer. That's why he's warning them. He's telling them, none of you, however, should suffer as a murderer. Because there will be tribulations those who call, of those who cause those type of deeds. <clears throat> and when he says here, or a meddler, you can also see in God's word translation in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15, if you suffer, comma, 
if you suffer, comma, because we know in the visible, many will suffer, many will go through tribulations, right? But there is other form of suffering regarding the justice, regarding the evil people are doing that you should not suffer. You should not pass through. <clears throat> and he says, you shouldn't suffer for being a murderer, comma, thief, comma, criminal, comma, or troublemaker. Troublemaker, it may be those who, who, go, who will go to cause trouble outside, who will manifest, and in manif in, when they manifest, instead of it being peaceful, they will be there only to cause, dis cause disorder, to cause trouble. <clears throat> and um, that's when sometimes they will also face the consequences. Uh, the police will go there and also inflict them pain, hit them, arrest them, and so on. Uh, but there's also other people when they will manifest peacefully, the police also will nevertheless uh, beat them, cause them harm, even though they're manifesting peacefully. But here we're not here to talk about, about uh, police violence or manifestations and so on. Here we, we have to see if you have the right of self-defense, if you have the right, uh, if the law of retaliation, eye for an eye, is according to the scriptures, if it is biblical, if it is according to the spiritual. <clears throat> so, like I've mentioned, in some countries when a thief is found, um, even before the police arrive, because in some, even in Africa, in many places, in different different places, uh, when a thief is found or murderer, somebody that, that has caused trouble, uh, evil, that, that has caused evil, when he's apprehended, he's caught, even before the police arrive, or even bef bef because sometimes they will call the police, and by the time the police arrive, that person already has was subjugated to great pain, great deal of suffering. Uh, some people, they will, even the population, they will take what they found, batten, um, sticks, and so on. They'll take the tires, put it, verse, they will this often even um, ga gasoline, put gasoline on that person, burn him, and so on. <clears throat> on those brigands. And is that authorized? In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 30, you're told in the Dua Rhyme Bible, the, the fault is not so great when a man had stolen, for he steal it to fill his hungry soul. What does this mean? In the English Standard Version, you're told, people do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his appetite, when he is hungry so if because there's different type of crime right if a person steals to feed his family to feed himself here in proverbs 6 30 says people do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his appetite the it does not mean that stealing to eat to satisfy your hunger is accepted but in the way the justice must be applied, it must be also applied according to justice, according to the gravity of the situation. If somebody steals to feed himself or to feed his family, of course he should reimburse, he should pay for what he has stolen. But he says here, people do not despise the thief. So those type of crimes, um, you're not gonna kill a person only because he's stealing to feed himself to satisfy his hunger. Even in ancestral Africa, it was like that. Um, meaning if a thief was caught, because in ancestral Africa, how was it? It was that if, for example, a person go to a field, he, was, he had the right to, uh, and if he was hungry, he had the right to take what was in the field to feed himself. But it was if he left the field with those provisions, with those things, that's when it is considered stealing. There is, uh, it is also the same thing in, um, in some countries, for example, in France, 
uh, if you go to, let's say, a supermarket, you have the right to eat in the supermarket. But if you live with those goods and you did not pay, if you leave, that's when it is considered stealing. But if you're there, you eat, you satisfy your hunger in there. For example, you take an apple and so on, you eat it. That's not considered a crime. But uh, even, but nevertheless, the police, uh, the security, they, they, they don't like when people do that. <clears throat> so now, while listening to the to this, don't say, oh, you're gonna go do the same thing. You're gonna go to to fields uh, of other people and then just eat whatever you can because those people they will also inflict you. They may inflict you great pain. They will. They may beat you and so on. But this, how it was in ancestral Africa is the people, if they were hungry, they had to go to the initiated to ask them, request them food, right? That's how he was. And if a person was in the field, if a person was passing by the, for example, there were trees uh, with fruit and so on, they could eat those tree, those, uh, those fruits. They could satisfy their hunger, but they, while they were there, while they were in the field itself, they could not leave, for example, with the goods and then go, for example, sell them or take it um, for later. No, they had to ask for the, for that. <clears throat> so here in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 30 was, Do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his appetite when he is hungry. Now, when we go in Exodus chapter 22, verse 2, you're told, if a thief is caught, is cuff, is cuffed, breaking in and beating, and is beaten to death, comma, no one shall be guilty of bloodshed. Period. Yes, this is in the scriptures. If a thief is caught breaking in, so this is not regarding uh, somebody that is that that is in the field eating to satisfy hunger. No. This is a thief. This is a criminal that break that break in in somebody, 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 um, someone else's place to steal to cause harm. And you're told here, if a thief is cuffed, so is cut. So if people found him, apprehend him, or if, for example, you you're at night, you're sleeping, you hear something, somebody is breaking in. Somebody is by is breaking in at the door or, the, or at the window, and you caught him. You were able to restrain him, and in the process of defending yourself, because when a criminal, when a thief comes, sometimes they'll come with with a weapon and so on. They want to cause you harm, so you have the right to defend yourself, to protect yourself, to protect your family, to protect maybe your children, to protect your wife. And you're, you're, you're told here in Exodus chapter 22, verse 2, that if in, the, if in the act of defending yourself, you kill that person, you, you murder him, you kill him, you're told, no one shall be guilty of bloodshed. So that means in the spiritual, you won't be found guilty of murder you have commit you killed the person but it was self-defense because you have also the right to live you have the right to protect yourself in new king james version if the thief is found breaking in comma and he is struck so that he dies comma so he is he he is struck for example you're you're defending yourself you're taking um you're taking maybe a stick, a baton, a baton, and you're striking him. You're striking him not because you want to murder him, but maybe you're striking him in the, in the head because you're trying to protect your, yourself. You're defending yourself. While doing so is not because you just want to kill him, but because you want to defend yourself, you want to protect yourself. And you kill that person. You are not guilty of bloodshed. So, it is personal justice. It is legitimate, legitimate self-defense.
what is forbidden is voluntary murder when somebody go out of their way go to kill somebody on purpose but here is not it was not your purpose it was not premeditated right you were defending yourself in exodus chapter 22 verse 2 in new international version if a thief is caught caught breaking in at night at night because some of those criminals some of those thieves they will they will act at night because at night that's when some, most people they are they are tired they are more vulnerable right and that's when sometimes they can uh, maybe you're sleeping so you're not so much aware of your surrounding right maybe you are in your house in your home you think you're secure you think you think you're thinking you're safe that's when and you're sleeping so that's when those criminals those thieves they will they will use those type those times when you're most most vulnerable to steal to kill to cause harm and uh, some criminals they will come, they will go to other people's houses to commit rape and so on so do you have the right to protect of course you do i mean which type of doctrine will t will tell you no you cannot protect yourself you cannot defend yourself does that mean if you out there the woman somebody breaks in in your house in your home and he's trying to rape you you're gonna you you're not go you don't have the right to defend yourself to protect yourself you're gonna you don't have the right to resist In Psalms chapter 10, verse 8, you're told in the New International Version. He lies in wait near the villages, semicolon. From ambush, he murders the innocent, period. His eyes watch in secret, in secret for his victim, semicolon. So here it's regarding those criminals, those murders. He lies in wait in, near the villages. From ambush, he murders the innocent. So you have to understand that uh, in New Living Translation, it says, they lurk in ambush in the villages, waiting to murder innocent people. They are always searching for helpless victims. And you have to understand, that's how Satan works. That's how demons act. So those criminals the their actions are evil that's how they operate right they lurk they ambush they try to murder innocent people and those who commit such act if they try to commit such act if they try to eat eat your children murder your child murder your wife murder you you have the right to protect yourself to defend yourself you're not gonna you're not gonna say to your children no turn the other cheek tell your wife no it's fine because supposedly jesus says turn the other cheek when they're trying to kill her murder her or rape her you see <clears throat> in luke In Luke chapter 12, verse 39, you're told in the New Living Translation, understand this column. If a, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, comma, he would not permit his house to be broken in, into. King James Bible, and this no, comma, that if the good man of the house so if the good man, somebody that, that's, that, that is not a committing crime, somebody that's innocent, is in his house, the good man. If the good man of the house had known at what hour the thief would come. come. So if somebody was informed that, oh, at 2 a.m., the thief is going to come to break into your house. You're told here, he would have watched, comma, and not have suffered his house to be broken through. 
You see, he would have watched, he would have protected his house. Why here in Luke, he doesn't say, no, uh, let the thief come into your house and take your goods. You see, no, he's, tell, he's saying, if the good men of the house had known at what hour the thief would come, he would have watched. And he would have protected his house. He would not have let it happen. But in Luke, <clears throat> um, so now in Luke twelve. 39 King James version he would have watched come out and not have suffered his house to be broken into and um, now when we go in Matthew In Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 40, <clears throat> you're told, um, because in verse 38, supposedly you're told, uh, he, you heard that it was said, I for nigh. And tooth for a tooth, verse 39. But I say to you, do not resist the evil, comma. Do not resist the evil, comma. But whoever will slap on your right cheek, comma, third to him also the other. Supposedly that Jesus says that. He says, but I say to you, do not resist the evil, comma. Do not resist the evil. So if the good man knew that the thief was coming at 2 a.m., why, or at night, why is he resisting the evil? by watching over his house and, and not letting it ha happen, you see? So he, the good man should then let the thief come into his house, take whatever he wants, or commit crime, kill, rape, do whatever. You see the type of nonsense they're trying to, they tr they're trying to make people believe that you should just let everything happen? Do not resist the evil. But whoever slap on your right cheek, turn to him also the other. In verse 40, supposedly in Matthew chapter 5, verse 40. And whoever is willing to take you to law, come out and take your coat, coat also per permit him to take the cloak. So if somebody comes to steal your computer, steal uh, your food in your house, comes steal your bed, your money, your goods in your house, are you going to also give him all the other things? You see? Are you not supposed to resist that? That is total nonsense. In Matthew 5, <clears throat> 38, 39, 40, 41, all that you have to understand, it was put in place to put people down, to put black people down to make them believe in nonsense. So that when the, um, the slavers, when the, the colonizers would come, steal their land, steal their goods, they would have already written in those Bibles, supposedly, no, turn the other cheek, let it happen. Uh, if somebody want to take your, your uh, here in Matthew, Matthew 5, 38. Uh, you heard that it was said, I for night, for two, but I say to you, do not resist the evil. So basically they will say, no, do not resist. Because if you resist, if you don't let it happen, oh, you're going to die, you're going to go to hell, you're going to suffer. You're going to burn in hell because you res you've resisted, you've disobeyed what the Christ supposedly said. You see? Because they brainwashed 
they first trying to brainwash, trying to try to make you believe, try, they want you to be submissive, trying for you to be the victim, accept that, so that when they will come then and steal, rape, murder, pillage, you, you, you will have the fear that, oh no, if I defend myself, I'm going against God, so you're going to act like a pacifist uh, and so on. Or supposedly a pacifist, you don't want to defend yourself. And that's completely, that's completely false. You see, he says, but I say to you, do not resist the evil. Do not resist the evil. Supposedly. <clears throat> now, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45, you're told, but whenever a foul spirit goes out from a man, comma, he, wonder, he wanders about in places without water in, in them, comma, and he seeks rest and does not find it. Verse 44. Then he says, I shall return to the to my house from where I came out. And he goes finding that it is empty, swept and decorated. Verse 45. Then he goes bringing with him, with it seven other spirits worse than itself and they enter and dwell there and the end of that man become becomes worse than its beginning. Thus, it will be done to this evil generation. So, here in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. But whenever a foul spirit goes out from a man, come up. You have to understand that. When a brigand, a bandit, a criminal is found by the population, for example. And he's, he's being beaten. They're beating him. They, if they are inflicting him great pain. That person is suffering, is crying, is pleading. When that is happening, that is happening. The evil spirit that is influencing that person, that demon that is possessing that person, gets out, leaves the man. And when that spirit, that demon that left, comes back, sees, for example, that that man is dead, was killed, he's going to go and possess other people. He's going to go trying to find other people. And that's when you see, in some places, the, a criminal is found, is killed, but then later on, another criminal, the criminality, the, the thieves is still going on because the same spirits, they're st still at work. They're still possessing people and influencing them. So that's why there's always banditism, <clears throat> criminals. In Exodus chapter 21, verse 16, in the New International Version, anyone who kidnaps someone is to put, he is to be put to death, comma. Because there are some people out there, some evildoers, who will try to kidnap people, take children, and do criminal things, unspeakable things to them. You see? And you're told here in Exodus chapter 21, verse 16, anyone who kidnaps someone is to be put to death. New Living Translation, kidnappers must be put to death. King James Bible, and he that steals a man, comma, and sells him, comma, or if he's found at, in his hand, comma, he shall surely be put to death. So, because when they kidnap, Sometimes they will sell the people to other people. Sometimes they will kill and so on. Uh, they will sell them or as slave, or slaves and so on. Uh, they will ask for ransom and so on. If those type of people are found, 
We are told here in Exodus chapter 21, verse 16, he is to be put to death. Because the Creator has created the first man, he was free. And he gave, he gives through his verb, people freedom, free will. So they are supposed to be free. And those who will come to try to restrict that freedom, to try to impute on that freedom, to try to put people into bondage, slavery, restrict them, uh, restrict them or of their free will, kidnap them, ask for ransom, they are going against the law of the Creator. The law, they are going against the spiritual. And if those people are found, the law in the law is life for life. They, if they try to restrict his right, because when they are trying to restrict the right of people, their well-being and so on, they are putting themselves in front of a fire because they are going against the law of the Creator. They are going against the verb of Luba. So they are in front of the fire. And when you are in front of the fire, you get burned. Others will think, no, it's barbarism. You must have compassion for the criminals. Yeah, you must have compassion for the killers. What compassion? They're thinking of the, 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 the criminals. They're thinking of those who have inflicted pain, those who have killed people, but they're not thinking of the victims, of the right of the victims. You'll see some people, they, they will protest, for example, the, um, the death penalty. They will protest. They'll say, no, it's barbarism and so on. If somebody kills, if somebody voluntarily kills someone, he has forfeited his right to exist, to live, because it's life for life. You've killed someone voluntarily. You must be put to death. You may think, oh, it's barbarism. No, what about the right? No. What about the right of the victim? What about the right of the families? John chapter 10, verse 1. Truly, truly, I tell you, whoever does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, comma, but climbs in other way, comma, is a thief and a robber. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Period. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Job, Job chapter 24, verse 14. The murderer rise before it is light, comma, that he may kill the poor and needy, comma, and in the night he is like a thief. You see? Because some of them, they act at night. <clears throat> so, supposedly, according to some, if somebody comes to kill, rape, murder, steal, you don't have the right to defend yourself. In Job, in Job chapter 24, verse 14, at dawn, murderers rise, Uh, this is in God's word translation. At dawn, murderers rise, comma, they kill the poor and the needy. At night, they become thieves. So, <clears throat> in Luke chapter 23, verse 39, this is according to the Korean Bibles, regarding when Christ was put to death. According to the Korean Bibles, there were also two criminals that was put to death at the same time, they will say it was crucified, but in fact, it was one pole, one piece of wood, not two. <clears throat> because that's uh, 
the true narrative, uh, the true story is in Bibel Klata Bali, the book of the truth, the only authentic Bible without any errors or contradiction. But here, nevertheless, in the Korean Bibles, you'll understand something. In the Korean Bibles, in Luke chapter 23, verse 39, you're told, but one of the evildoers who were crucified with him was blaspheming him, and he said, if you are the Messiah, save yourself and save us also. So one of the criminals, he was blaspheming, speaking against the Christ. Verse 40, and his companion rebuked him and said to him, his companion. So the other criminal said to him, are you not even afraid of God? Question mark. For you also are in condemnation with him. Verse 41. And we justly so, comma, because we are worthy, comma, for we are repaid according to what we have done, comma, but nothing evil has been done by this one. So the other criminal here, he understood the notion of justice that many people don't understand even today. He understood somewhere something regarding the visible, regarding society, regarding the law itself. And he has accepted that. Because he says, Are you not even afraid of God, comma? For you are also con in condemnation with him, period. And we justly so, comma, justly. So for that criminal, he understand that what they, because he was suffering, he was being put to death. He was being, according to the Korean Bibles here, being crucified. So he was in great pain. Nevertheless, he says, we are, and we justly so, comma. So he says that it was just what was happening to him, what was being done to him. Because we are worthy, comma. So they were worthy of receiving that sentence, that punishment. God's word translation, verse 40. But the other criminal scolded him. Don't you fear God at all? Can't, can't you see that you're condemning, you're condemned in the same way that he is? Verse 41, New American Standard Bible. And we indeed are suffering justly, comma. For we are receiving what we deserve for our crimes. Semicolon. We are receiving what we deserve. So the criminal, that criminal, he understood that they deserve to die. They deserve to suffer for, for what they've done. Luke chapter 21, verse 41, good news, good news translation. Ours, however, is only right, comma, because we are getting what we, reserve, what we deserve for what we did. Semicolon, but he has done nothing wrong. Has done nothing wrong. You see, so that criminal, he understood the notion of justice. If you've done evil, you've committed crime, you've killed, you deserve, you deserve to die if you kill someone. If you're, you, there is justice. There is the law of retaliation. And according to the Korean Bibles, what happened to that criminal? What did Christ, according to the Korean Bibles, I'm, I'm saying again, said to him, right? Because he understood, he's, he accepted the punishment. He accepted that he was in the wrong and what he was receiving was punishment for his evil deeds. <clears throat> in John chapter Chapter 2, verse 15, you're told. 
Before going in verse 15, in verse 14, he says in John chapter 2, verse 14, in the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for supposedly sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. So here is, according to the Korean Bibles, the Christ. The Christ clears the temple because he saw people merchant. And in verse 15, you're told, Christ made a whip from some rope, ropes, and chased them all out of the temple, period. He drove out the sheep and cattle, comma, scattered the money changer, the money changers, quaint, quaint over the floor, and turned over their tables. Verse 16, then going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. So the Christ considered these people thieves, these people criminals. And he chased them. He made a whip. Because when the criminals are found some, in some countries, in some places, when the criminals are apprehended, what people will do? They will grab things. They will grab ropes. They will grab baton, baton, things to harm themselves, right? To beat, inflict pain on those criminals. The Christ did the same thing. He saw those criminals in the temple. What did he do? He made a whip from some ropes. And chase them out. Chase them all out. In Matthew chapter 21 verse 13 you're told. It is written. He said to them. My house will be called a house of prayer. But you are making it a dent of robbers. So the Christ considered those people robbers. New Living Translation. My temple will be called a house of prayer. But you have turned it into a dent of thieves. A dent. A den of thieves. So he considered those people bandit thieves. And what did he do? He grabbed a rope. He made a rope. And he started clearing. So. When supposedly the Christ says no, uh, in the current Bibles they claim no, do not resist evil. Why is he not? Why is he resisting the robbers in the temple? Why is he resisting the evil in the temples? You see, they falsify the scriptures. They falsify the text. They added a lot of lies, contradictions. Like I've mentioned, the, the missionaries, they put that there in those Bibles. And they say, no, you see, the Bible is the word of God. So you have to obey. You have to listen to what it says. And you have to act accordingly. You have to give the other cheek, present the other cheek. So that, and they claim, no, you, you see, the Savior says, turn the other cheek. So when the missionaries, with their evil intent, intentions, uh, the slavers and so on, the, the, those who will pillage, who will steal, who will commit murder, steal, and so on, when it happens, they'll say, no, don't, uh, don't defend yourself, don't protect yourself, don't resist, because supposedly the Christ said, turn the other cheek. You see, that's how they operate. You have to understand that in the true version, the Christ did not say you have uh, that no uh, supposedly turn the other cheek. The, cru the true Christ did not say that.
what is the Talion? Because the law of retaliation is also known as the law of Talion. And what is the definition of Talion? Is similar, same as well. So also known as punishment correspond to the crime. So as such, as such. That's the definition for Talion. And you have to understand the first person in the visible, the first man who understood the law of retaliation, the law of Talion, is the first man himself, Moto. When we go in Genesis chapter 2, verse 23, in the current Bibles, you're told, in the contemporary English version, and the man exclaimed, comma, here is someone like me. She is part of my body, comma, my own flesh and bones, period. She, co she came from me, comma, a man, period. So I will name her woman. So you have to understand here that Moto, the first man, he was the law. He represented the law. And... He says, in the Good News translation, at last, here is one of my own kind. Contemporary English version, someone like me, like me. So they were similar as such. They were the same. You see? So that, that is the Italian the similarities, the law. That's why Moto represented the law. And he was, it was the Italian that he presented. That he presented. You see? The law of similarities as such. As well. And all the children of Moto were to be identical, the same. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, you're told, And God said, It is not good for Adam, according to the name they gave him here in the current Bibles, to be alone. I shall make a helper for him like himself, like himself, like himself. So similar. So if the first man cut the first woman, which uh, whom they name uh, in the current Bibles Eve, but her true name is Muto. If he were to cut her arm, they will no longer be similar. They will no longer be alike. So his arm also had to be cut for them to be the same, for them to be similar. You see? That's the law of the Italian. That And uh, the patriarch, the prophet, they understood that. Even Moses, according to the name they gave him in the current Bibles, he understood that. His true name is Busi. He understood that. And in Genesis chapter 29, verse 14, you're, you're told, And Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. So this was regarding Laban and Jacob. He said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. My bone and my flesh. So they are alike, similar, you see? Um, now some fake pastors are going to claim that uh, Jacob was a woman uh, because he says, because Laban says, surely you are my bone and my flesh. You see the heresies in um, the, their delusion, in their thinking. But <clears throat> that's completely false. 
But like I've mentioned, the patriarch, the prophets, they understood that. And that's why in Leviticus chapter 24, verse 17, you're told, and if a man takes the life of anyone else, comma, he must surely be put to death. If a man takes the life of anyone else, comma, that, and you have to understand in the true version, that's if, if it is voluntary. Uh, if it is voluntary. Even if, even if a king or a president kills someone, he is also to be put to death. That was the law, whoever he was. But if, if an order was put to kill someone because of their criminal act, because they've killed someone, if it was for punishment, for justice, then the king had the right to say, no, this person must die because he killed someone, so he disobeyed the law. You see? He had the right to exercise that punishment. But whoever it is, if they kill voluntarily, they commit murder, they also must be put to death. <clears throat> That's why in the Revelation, when the first woman, so Muto, her name, Eve, according to the Korean Bible, she ate the fruit. In the Revelation, Adam, Muto, they, when she ate it first, they were no longer similar. You see? That's why he also had to eat it for them to be similar again. He understood that. <clears throat> now, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 39, he says, You have heard that it, is, it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for two, verse 39. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slap, slap you on the right cheek, turn them to the other cheek. That's completely false. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29, you're told, After all, no one ever hated their own body, comma, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does for the church. So if you does care for your body, you also must protect it and defend it. That's the law. The law of retaliation is valid. The law of the Italian is valid. But it has to be applied according to the verb of Loba. So when you're defending yourself, you must not um, be delivered to yourself, to to your own vices, uh, let anger overcome you, seize you, uh, where you become violent or so you, it has to be according to the verb of Luba, according to justice. Because the criminals who kill, who commit heinous crimes, and then you see they're going to be put in prison. In prison, they're going to eat. They're going to watch TV. They're going to exercise, go to the gym, and so on. Be, be happy, laugh. Which, which type of doctrine, which type of justice is this? So they've killed someone. They've deprived other people their liberty. They've killed them. But they, they're eating, drinking, watching TV, laughing, and so on, in prison. That won't do anything. Those, the criminals, those who've killed, must pay. 
must pay. So that was the message uh, regarding the law of retaliation, the right to self-defense. It is valid. You have the right to defend yourself, to protect yourself. <clears throat> that was the message. There is an authentic Bible, the only authentic Bible without any errors or contradictions. Because in the current Bibles, it will say the Christ supposedly say, you have heard eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, but I said the, the true Christ did not say those things because they have falsified the text of scriptures. This is the authentic Bible. And there is only one mandated teacher, Zula 100. There is one creator, Loba. All glory be to Loba, the only and unique creator. 